Chris Legend and someone who many American fans weren't too familiar with before late 2021, Ishii has been one of the more common wrestlers from Japan to appear on AEW programming since. A lot of what you see in his matches is the classic hard-hitting strong style of Japan, but what sets him apart from the rest who are doing it is his ability to absorb so much punishment while still delivering stiff strikes. No matter where he is in the world, he never fails to bring the fans to their feet when it comes to that point in the match to break each other down with chops. Having won championships from Japan to America to England, there isn't much that the Stone Pitbull hasn't accomplished. But something that has been overlooked is his role in AEW. You may not realize that out of his six matches with the company, four singles and two tag, he has only won the tag matches. Every singles match, he made his opponents look better while giving it his all, as any wrestler should. With the biggest example being taking a bump for Kanosuke to Takeshita after a long exchange during a 10 person tag at Forbidden Door 2023. Being a legend in Japan already and helping shape their future while now doing it in America, he should be given his flowers while he's still active. With some people already having been familiar with him from seeing him on the American indie scene and AAA in Mexico, I don't think many wrestlers have impressed as many in their wrestling debut on national television as Vikingo did. Ever since his AEW debut in March of 2023, he's been one of the most exciting names to see on any card for millions of fans no matter what company or country he's in, even having brought many eyes to Triple Mania in his recent victory over Kenny Omega. In AEW, we are used to seeing Lucha Libre from the likes of Ray Phoenix, Penta, and Commander among many others. But none of them are quite like Vikingo, even while being amazing in their own ways. Seeing him wrestle for the first time really sent me back to when I had first seen Will Ospreay wrestle in the mid-2010s, probably against Ricochet. Whether you call their matches wrestling or a gymnastic show, there is no denying their athleticism or talent. With him, the luchadors I previously mentioned, and many more who are making names for themselves, I really feel like we are in one of the best times ever when it comes to being a fan of Lucha Libre. And with Vikingo being a regular on AAA, AEW, and ROH, he will certainly continue to wow many wrestling fans around the globe. Someone who really could have been number two on this, I really don't know what you can't say about Will Ospreay. In my opinion, one of the most divisive wrestlers in the world, you either love or hate his style, but regardless of your opinion of him, you can't deny that he's constantly evolving. He may still be able to pull out a few of the high-flying tricks that you saw in his matches with Ricochet that split the internet apart back in the mid-2010s, but his grappling has improved so much from all the time he spent wrestling around the world, especially against the greats in Japan. Ever since he first appeared in AEW, he's been treated like the big deal he is, and always in one of the most important matches on the card, whether it's a singles match with Dax, Orange Cassidy, or Kenny Omega, or teaming with his faction United Empire, and Aussie Open could have very well been on this list too, but since they signed with AEW, I left him out. There was no better feeling than finally seeing him and Kenny Omega come face to face in the trios tag titles tournament in late 2022. It also appears his time with AEW is not stopping anytime soon with his faction mates Aussie Open being signed to Tony Khan and now ROH tag champs. Osprey is also being rumored to face Jericho on the All In card at Wembley Stadium. AEW fans will have their Will Osprey fix in the coming months, and before we get off of him, I highly suggest watching his two singles matches with Kenny Omega this year if you somehow haven't seen them yet. The two best matches of the year in my opinion. One at Wrestle Kingdom 17 and the second one at Forbidden Door. From the moment he debuted at All Out 2021, even if you didn't know who he was, you knew he was a big deal. Before that, even I had never heard of him, and just from his face off with John Moxley, I was excited to see them face off at Dynamite the week after. Having wrestled for the better part of 35 years, there's not much he hasn't accomplished. You've seen the hard-hitting Japanese strong style in AEW before, but now seeing it from the one of the originators, it's never been this exciting to see. Aside from making AEW a more welcoming space for a broader audience, he's also put a lot of eyes on Presu, including myself. After having faced the likes of Brian Danielson, Darby Allen, Samoa Joe, Sting, John Moxley, and long others, he's shown there's no one of any size or style he can't keep up with, and no matter who's on the card, it's one of the biggest pops of the night every time he shows up. Even someone at the level of Brian Danielson was elevated just by having the chance to compete against such a respected veteran, and he's still showing no signs of slowing down in AEW. As just last night, he wrestled Darby Allen in a surprise match on Collision, which gave me the idea for this video. You may think, why is Rocky Romero above the likes of Will Ospreay and Minoru Suzuki? Well, many people aren't aware of how important he has been when it comes to AEW's working relationships with outside companies, mainly New Japan Pro Wrestling. 
On top of showing his great wrestling ability across all of AW's programs and bringing his New Japan faction chaos together with his Rapongi vice partner Trent Beretta's AW faction best friends, there is a far more important relationship that he had built. In the last year, you've heard the term Forbidden Door a lot, from the pay-per-view itself to wrestlers calling themselves it like John Moxley, but the real Forbidden Door is Rocky Romero. If it wasn't for just a text that he had sent Tony Khan with the idea of the show bridging both companies together, we may have never gotten it, or at least certainly not when we did. Khan and New Japan's Booker Gato had a slight working relationship throughout the height of the pandemic, but with Rocky having been the person who's done hundreds of phone calls and texts between Tony Khan and Gato after suggesting this idea of a massive show, we have no one else that we can thank more than Rocky for a lot of the best wrestling moments in the last year, such as Omega vs. Osprey 2 and Okada vs. Danielson. Audio Jungle Audio Jungle